Previously on MKR, our new round of instant restaurants began. <laughs> with our new judge, internationally renowned food critic, Matt Preston. And Australia's hottest menu. What a race to do a chilli menu. But WA's chilli mates, Shay and Dave, surprised everyone and set the competition alight. Absolutely delicious. Yum. This guy I'm giving you is a test. To open the leaderboard with a commanding 77 points. That was awesome, buddy. Tonight, we're in Sydney's high-class eastern suburbs. I don't want to tempt fate, but I feel confident. With posh friends Sophie and Catherine. Antique books. <laughs> feel the wear. Oh, my God, we're posh. One of those spoons probably cost more than Katie's car. <laughs> with a menu in a class of its own. Wow. What language is this? Half the stuff on that menu I couldn't even pronounce. Will Sophie and Catherine's madly ambitious dishes... Fear not, there is nothing to worry about here. ..get them a step closer... <laughs> ..to the $100,000 grand prize. With the pressure that they will be under, anything could happen. I'm Maybe. frankly terrified. <laughs> Tonight, we're in the coastal eastern suburbs of Sydney for posh friends Sophie and Catherine's instant restaurant. Big day. <laughs> How are you feeling? Very big day. <laughs> Did you sleep? <laughs> Did you sleep? You're a good sleeper. I normally sleep like a log, yeah. even though I was awake in the night. Oh, yeah. If we're going to be accused of being posh eastern suburbs here, we might as well act it and head out in our active wear and get a coffee to start the day. <laughs> How are you feeling about today? I'm actually... I don't want to tempt fate by saying I feel confident. But I feel confident. <laughs> Shay and Dave got an overall score of 77. Thank you so much. But I hope we can do better. And quite a lot better. <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> the overwhelming ambition it, of the woman. Lady Macbeth. <laughs> Catherine and I met 18, 18 years ago. We love a wine. Uh, we love to cook. Is that legal on a beach? And we love to laugh together. <laughs> We have a business called The Dinner Ladies. Boy, we've knocked out some lasagnas in our time, Sophie. Yep. We are absolutely not qualified chefs. <laughs> we employ qualified chefs. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to squeeze the okay, lines. with your silly little squeezer. Yeah. We're home cooks, and we never pretended to be anything else. <laughs> Catherine, she's a natural leader. She just rolls her sleeves <laughs> up and goes for it. I'm going to put the seeds in with the chili. Oh, God, please go. I would say Sophie is too much of a perfectionist. Oh, my God, it drives me mad. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, I wouldn't consider us competitive people. However, are you I think... kidding me? <laughs> I think we're competitive. We are going to win my kitchen rules. Let's go. We're going to get shopping. <laughs> we had. <laughs> With a long list of specialty ingredients in mind, Sophie and Catherine set out to shop with only five hours before guests arrive. You know, it's one of those things, part of it is in our control, which is how we cook today. Part of it is not in control, is how people take it. Yep. Sophie and Catherine talk a big game. We're expecting high quality food that is high class in the eastern suburbs yeah. of Sydney. But it has to be done really well. So they need to bring it. I would be disappointed if we aren't at, at the, the top, top of the leaderboard by the end of the day. I'd be disappointed too. I'd be super surprised if Sophie and Catherine did not do well. <laughs> it's a competition. I don't feel safe. <laughs> there's a good park. Catherine, there's a good park. Back right there. The first things that we need to try to find is the octopus. This octopus here, this big one, ideally we'd like another one the same size. For entree, we're making twice cooked octopus with green romesco and hamel crumb. They look, they look magnificent. Bloody hell, they look fresh. Twice cooked octopus, the first way of cooking it is into water to make it nice and tender, and then throw it on the grill just to get some chard around it, and that would be delicious. Actually, do you know what? I love this bread, and I think it'll work really well in breadcrumbs. Have you, you look have suspicious. You, if you've done your breadcrumbs with I this have. and you've been happy, yeah. on your head be it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're doing marvellously. We're thinking that Catherine and Sophie are going to serve fine, fine dining. dining. I think sort of, because yeah. the, the way they come across, the way they the talk. The rich ladies. Yes. Posh. The way they walk and, oh, yes, and, <laughs> and oh, <laughs> yes. Shallots and onions. They'll be in the allium section. OK. Um, 
Stop using posh words. They already think we're posh. <laughs> Sophie and Catherine remind me of the Desperate Housewives of Sydney. What a nice so thing. fancy and cold <laughs> these days. Wow. Very posh. They drive the best of the best and they only go out for coffee. Let's have a little left -o. You always overbuy. Oh, my God. But this is the competition. It's very hard to impress me with. They have to be perfect. So that's the last thing. Great. OK. Good. Hey, we're nailing this shopping thing. We're actually shopping. Shopping's the easy start. Shopping's the easy start. Our menu is from so many different cultures and traditions. Got a number of ingredients and influences yep. from all around the world. And what better thing to do than come home and try and relive those memories around the dinner table? My son, he sent me the most beautiful message yesterday saying, Mum, you know, love you, so proud of you. You're the best cook in the world. I know my children are really proud of me. I want to prove to myself that it's, that I've got something for them to be proud of. <laughs> and he said, you know, to me, you're you're ready, you're you're um, you're your kitchen rules. <laughs> Sophie, I don't think I've ever seen you get weepy. Oh, I know. <laughs> There's something about setting out, particularly at our age, to do something quite challenging and really <laughs> conspicuously <laughs> achieve at it that I think will justify my children's pride in me. Hey, well, let's okay. decorate that restaurant. Okay. Yep. Time to hang the sign, Sophie. Big moment. Hearth is the fireplace, and that has always been the heart of a family home. It's where everyone gathers together. And originally, food was cooked in the hearth, so to us, it seemed really representative of the sort of experience we want to create. The whole feel is a Caravaggio painting. <laughs> At the moment, this looks like someone just dropped their veg basket. I hope everyone will go wow when they walk in here. The room that we're having our instant restaurant is already fairly well decorated <laughs> <laughs> because my husband is an artist. There is just so much going on in this house. That's what's pretty special here, I reckon. We think it's beautiful. Doing this job makes me remember all the dinners we've had in this house. Our theme, which we thought was very warm and earthy and stuff, I'm suddenly now thinking, oh, we're sort of playing to our stereotype. Antique books. <laughs> Silverware. <laughs> oh, my God, we're posh. <laughs> yep, sure are. Sophie, you've done it. It looks gorgeous. Let's get cooking. <laughs> <laughs> OK, come on. Let's, Let's go. With their instant restaurant now complete, Sophie and Catherine have only three hours to prep their dishes before the guest teams arrive. How do I look? Catherine and Sophie. <laughs> All right, I'm doing the double tie. Uh, dessert. I am now going to start with fig leaf semifreddo. For dessert, we're making fig leaf semifreddo with grilled figs and Pedro Jimenez. Dessert. Wow. Semifreddo, which is semi-frozen ice cream with fresh grilled figs and then a syrup of Pedro Jimenez. I'm looking forward to this one, actually. I am going to cut the fig leaves, Sophie. There's a lovely, subtle, coconutty flavour that fig leaf gives to milk when it's infused. Bashing down on my fig leaves to extract maximum flavour. Fig leaves don't have a lot of flavour. They're beautiful, lovely fragrance, but it's more of a whisper. In the fig leaf infused cream, we just need to whip it. It could be really beautiful. If it's out of flavour, it could be a little bit disappointing. OK, now I am going to fold egg oh white my. into the fig leaf cream. Look at these clouds of egg oh white. Oh, my goodness. It's unbelievable. Semifreddo is a labour of love. If you get it right, it is one of the most beautiful things you can eat. I love that fig leaf flavour. But if you get it wrong, it's just mm. icy, slimy, bleh. So I'm okay. just going to put this in the freezer. You are the dessert queen. OK, semi feta. Great. All right, they actually come in two hours. God, till guests <laughs> arrive, I'm going to stuff the spatchcock for the main course. Yep. For the main course, we're making roast spatchcock with andouille, fresh corn polenta and grilled radicchio. Spatchcock is a baby chicken, so it's a smaller version of a chicken. When I'm reading the menu, roasted spatchcock with nduya, I'm wondering where the nduya comes to play. I think a few people are going to be a bit perplexed by nduya. 
First of all, how to pronounce it, because it's spelt so strangely. Nduya is a soft, spicy salami paste. It's really big flavour. Spatchcock's flavour is, is quite subtle. And so there's a danger that the nduya is going to overpower the subtle flavour of the spatchcock. I'm going to make sure we've got exactly the same amount in each one and not have one blow someone's head off and one person be under season. Nduya can't take over the flavours of the dish. It's just there to intensify the heat, not burning your head off. Some people like having their heads blown off. Ha-ha! <laughs> Both working on the main time to chew. chop chicken wings. We have to make sauce for the spatchcock that we hope will be of really high calibre. Fear not, Sophie! <laughs> there is nothing to worry about here. There's a lot to worry about here. Ah. Wow. Okay. No, this is wow. Nice cleaving, Check Catherine. Out the cleaving. Are you getting some aggro out there, Catherine? Yep. What is it? Who are you thinking about when you do that? <laughs> Who do you think I'm getting my aggro out on? <laughs> I'd love to see a sauce on this main course, but that sauce needs to be done well. OK, boy, we're going to get some flavour out of these chicken wings. And extra bones to form the base of the sauce. Not too hot, not too salty, not too sweet. That will make an elegant sauce. It needs to be well balanced. <laughs> That's going to be the basis of a magnificent menu-worthy sauce, let's it hope. Is, it is. We want the sauce to have some meatiness that, so that it can actually handle a bit of the sweetness of the fresh corn polenta and permeate all the spatchcock to bring it all together. OK, Sophie, I'll put this on to reduce. That smells delicious. Stoked with it. Overall, I'm looking at Sophie and Catherine's menu and I want to eat all of it. I knew those ladies were going to bring the game. The guests are coming in 15 minutes, which seems rude. <laughs> Why did we invite them, honestly? <laughs> Who invited them? For our first course, I am going to get the octopus on. For our entree, we're making twice-cooked octopus with green romesco and hamel crumb. All right, Sophie, so these are clean, they're going Fabulous. in. Fabulous, stick them in. Twice-cooked octopus automatically makes me think they're going to blanch it to be tender and then barbecue it to get that lovely crispy finish. But it's very easy to get wrong. And first of all, we're pressure cooking the octopus and the barbecue. That will need to be boiling hot. One of my favourite parts of this dish is obviously the hero, the octopus. I think we cook it beautifully. It's so tender, and yet it gets that beautiful char on the I'm barbecue. I'm so scared about the octopus. We're going to get it right. It's going to take all about the timing. It right. It's all yeah. about the timing, and yeah. you just don't know. Last time we made it with bigger octopus, but we cooked it for 15 minutes. Correct. And it was perfect. Yeah. These are smaller. I'm set. Think. Yeah. What do you so reckon? let's do them just a 12, little. 12 minutes? 12. I, I reckon 12, 12 is perfect. perfect. Okay, great. With octopus, if it's undercooked, you've got car tired, bouncy. <laughs> if you overcook it, you've got mushy cat food. Disgusting. The octopus timer is going off. Okay, three, two, okay. one. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to leave that to be pressure. It's going nuts. Yep. You said coming and we are going to change. change. Okay, let's go. All right. Ah! I'm expecting opulence. So they've got the bougie suburb check. I wonder if we're going to get the bougie food check. I'm expecting a diamond in my champagne glass. The way that they talk about food. I'm definitely expecting a five-star restaurant. Sophie and Catherine, very well organised and very knowledgeable around food. If anyone's going to knock us off the top of the leaderboard, it'll be them too. Door's going to knock any minute now. And we will have to go out, be calm and gracious and welcoming and welcome them to Hearth. Shall we go in? Let's do yeah. it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Cannot wait. It's like a jungle out here. Yeah. Gorgeous. Beautiful. So excited. So yeah. excited. Can't wait. <laughs> Welcome to Sydney. 
Sophie and Catherine, they looked beautiful as fabulous well. <laughs> as always. Hello. 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 Nice to see you. Hi. I'm expecting big things from Sophie and Catherine yeah. tonight for sure. Shay and Dave definitely could lose their place on the top of the leaderboard. Yes. Oh wow. This is like the Last Supper. Hopefully it's not our Last Supper. The table setting was amazing. One of those spoons probably cost more than Katie's car. Oh, look yeah. at that. Amazing. Seeing the room, we felt like that we were on our anniversary or date night. We've just gone out to a beautiful restaurant. Incredible. Our names are on the pairs. Oh, wow. It's amazing. Oh, my God, look at the peacock, my favourite. Oh, my peacock God. Pairs. It did look a bit like a museum, Ripley's, believe it or not. There was, like, cow skull. Yeah. There was... Massive spine at the back was... of the room. But it just didn't go. <laughs> Huge painting of her husband just staring at her. It was just a lot to take in. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our instant restaurant, Hearth. Hearth, it's where your family and your friends come together and feel warm and feel connected. So we want you to feel at home. So welcome very much to Hearth. Absolutely. Yay. Welcome, everyone. We're so pleased to have you here. We have to get back to the kitchen. Yes. See you later. Enjoy. Bye, Bye now. Bye. Guys, when we first walked in, could you feel like there were all these eyes looking at us? Yes. <laughs> Rosie, I feel that they move when you move. Mm. It was like the night of the museum. There was eyes, there was bones, there were faces. It was crazy. It was, yeah, it was freaking us out. I could never sleep in this room. No way. We were, yeah, we were, we were, we were like, what is it here? If we were playing Jumanji, we would lose. Like, because yeah. everything would come alive would be eaten to death. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Check the octopus. Can I just add the octopus? Yes. yes, thank you. For entree, we're making twice cooked octopus with green romesco and hamol crumb. It come off pressure. Oh, it looks fabulous, smells fabulous. The key to cooking octopus is you've got to get it tender first before char grilling it. Barbecue is on. With the barbecue, you want it to be absolutely piping hot to get that good char on the octopus, so we need to get it on now to just be absolutely sure it's smoking. Well, now that everyone's arrived, I'm actually feeling a bit calm. I know, that's a mistake. The judges <laughs> haven't arrived. <laughs> well, Mr. President, I'm very happy in my hometown, Sydney. I love Sydney and I think we're in for a really good night of food. I hope they're expecting excellent food. <laughs> oh, are we ready? Yeah, let's go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, calm, calm. Mm, we're, we're used to this sort of stuff. We do it all the time. Come on, we can do it. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, nice I'm to see very you. Good. Mwah. Mwah. Oh, welcome. Mwah. Mwah. Hi. 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 Everyone's fresh tonight. Mwah. Mwah. Oh, smells good. <laughs> yeah. we'll no. Bonsoir. Oh, wow. Matt and Manu look spunky when they walk in like a regal presence. Hello. It suited the restaurant. It did, fancy didn't it? Fancy on yes. fancy. How are we? Very good. Well, I think we are for a good night. I look up to Manu. I think his etiquette and his approach to his work is outstanding. And he's a good-looking guy as well. So, did I say as well? Not that I think I'm a good-looking guy. But you are a good-looking guy. He's a good-looking guy. Look at this room. It's like a museum. It is like a museum. Run by a crazy person. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm here. <laughs> oh my gosh, there and there is the crazy person. <laughs> no, I think the crazy person should be. <laughs> um, welcome everyone to our instant restaurant called Half. We like to cook food that is honest and full of flavour. Okay, you can now look at your menus. That is very cute. 
Oh, that's lovely. For entree, we have a twice cooked octopus with green romesco and a ham on crumb. It's a Spanish style menu. Do they have what it takes to knock Spanish food out of the park? No, I don't think so. And for main course, we have roast spatchcock with fresh corn polenta and induya. What language is this? The menu said chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. I've never read a book and I don't <laughs> understand the words on the paper. I was shriveled into my seat. And our dessert is fig leaf semifreddo with grilled figs and a Pedro Jimenez syrup. I love it. Sophie and Catherine, you've written a beautiful menu. Let's hope it tastes as good. Good luck. Off you go. Thanks Kitchen so ladies. much. Thank we'll you. see you soon. Bye. See ya. Wow. After reading the menu, what's your ideas of Sophie and Catherine? I expected to not know what half of it was. Yeah. Like, come on, half the stuff on that menu I couldn't even pronounce. No. I think this menu is very targeted to intimidate. It's got some, obviously, the jamón, and it's got some Italian things in there as well. So I think it's... Even it's, the it's, dessert. Is it's the, targeted is at all of us a little bit. So. And this is the challenge when you write the menu. You don't know who's sitting around the table. We've got, you know, a guy from northern Spain where octopus is almost like a, a national dish. I've got a couple of Calabrians here who have eaten an awful lot of octopus and cooked it. It's going to be tricky. For our first course, we've got a lovely rough rustic crumb here. For our twice cooked octopus. What slightly concerns me is that we are doing non-traditional versions of things that people might hold dear. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you? I do. Oh. I would say that we are traditional home cooks, but who cook like your grandmother, but a very well-traveled, adventurous grandmother. <laughs> I think this course is going to be yummy, and I, I think, think they're going to love it. Too. Yeah. The hamon is the greatest expression of cured meat in the world. Whether treating a work of art like that by putting into a crown, it's very easy to get wrong. Oh, I so hope we get a 10, Sophie. Oh, that Catherine. would start the evening brilliantly. Oh, honestly, ah, honestly. Just oh. imagine how great that would be. Oh, so for entree, this is my green romesco. What I'm expecting for the romesco is that the romesco doesn't dominate and overpower the octopus. A couple of green jalapenos, which are normally as mild as bloody capsicums. Oh. And that, those ones had a kick. Yeah, that's pretty good, Sophie. Is it? <laughs> Madam Casey, your expectation for Sophie and Catherine tonight? I, I'm a bit uh, worried with hamon on the menu when we've got a Spaniard. At the table. You pronounce that clock. really well. I like it. I like oh, the jamón. Uh, I like I've it. dated a lot of Spanish men. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> should, should, I, should I be worried about it? <laughs> You're the next one. <laughs> Those people who've never seen jamón before, what is it like? Uh, jamón is a, it's a very, um, very tender meat, and a good jamón should melt in your mouth. It's like the caviar of, of Spanish meats. There's more to Spanish food than put it on a menu. You've got to have the heart in the background. And the Spanish looks. You know I'm hashtag Hayley because we bonded over the fact that I don't like barramundi and you don't like seafood. <laughs> so have you ever tried octopus before? I've never tried octopus. I just don't like those little circle things on the, the, suckers, <laughs> <aren't they? laughs> the, the tentacles. Yeah, on the octopus, but I'll try it, sure. I do get scared when it is the head and the tentacles. Like, is that a thing that you, that's on the plate? I would never order octopus. I love, love it. Love it. Leanne, love Leanne it. makes this dish. Yeah. My one's an insalata de brupo. We always do it in salad. When I saw octopus on the entree, I thought to myself, yes, if you do not get this right, you're going to F it up big time. But it's a very hard thing to cook. Very hard. I thought, let's hope they F it up. <laughs> let's go. Char that octopus. Oh, lordy. I'm getting all the plating ready, and it's your job to Ah, oh, that octopus, baby. I'm frankly terrified. <laughs> I'm so scared about cooking the octopus. I think the biggest challenge with Sophie and Catherine is cooking the octopus perfectly. We don't want to cook the octopus any further. We just want to get a nice char mark on it. If you overcook octopus, the suckers, they all slip off. Octopus, it's very easy to get wrong. I'm so scared about this. If you get them all exactly right yep. and turn them at exactly yep. the right moment yep. and get them off at exactly the right moment, that's nerve-wracking. Oh, my God. OK. They're still... If we don't get it right, 
will fail spectacularly, but we'd go down we, in flames. We would. Oh shit, shit. Oh, that's hot. So with octopus, if it's undercooked, you've got car tires. If you overcook it, you've got mushy cat food. Disgusting. Done. But I am feeling nervous about how they're going to receive octopus plating up. I think that's where Sophie and my teamwork really comes to the fore. A green romesco. Amazing. Tomatoes. Right, right. Like Central one. This looks fabulous, Sophie. We can instinctively follow each other and do jobs and just work together. We've done it a lot. That looks fabulous. Bloody hell. The octopus, they look a bit like seahorses. Yeah. When we get the octopus on the plate, I think it looks fabulous. I really do. I'm I thrilled. do too. And yeah. the line of ham on crumb gives it a bit of elegance. It colourful. Looks, looks great. great. Yeah, beautiful line of crumb. Don't go too much. It looks sort of modern and fun and tasty. I reckon that this one for Matt. I'm going to do this one for Manu. OK, great. Let's go. OK. Entree is served. For you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Grazie. It looked really good. Did Manu go in the kitchen and cook that for him? I'm threatened. The dish looked amazing when they put it down. And smelt amazing. This looks like it's gonna be good. Oh. <laughs> Adding Spanish elements to a plate is extremely brave. And hopefully all the elements work well together. There's something very strange about watching another human eat your food with no facial response or reaction. It's mesmerising. <laughs> the only good thing is they're not immediately spitting it out. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. <sighs> bon appétit. Entree yeah. tasted bloody good and I was spewing. <laughs> I, want, I wanted perfect. more of that. Two tentacles weren't enough. Mm. That's an Italian dish, you serve a whole octopus. <laughs> That's the way Italians do yeah. it, right? When I put the octopus in my mouth, I was just like, wow. I wanted to hate it, but I couldn't. Mm. 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 Oh, oh. Mm. The twice cooked octopus was fantastic. It was like the knife through butter. Uh, the romesco really played really well. Uh, a little bit of hotness in there. But I think the jamon was a little bit more like bacon. It didn't taste like jamon to me. Mm. Not particularly. Everyone was really getting into the octopus. <laughs> I don't like the texture of those suckers. You can't just think it's chicken? No, all seafood. It's fish. Just fishy. fishy. Things are staring at me. Just, it absolutely works. It's just wow. It's unbelievable. Delicious. Everything, the octopus, the romesco sauce. I've never tried a romesco sauce. Tried it by itself. The flavour's coming out. Stunning. I loved the dish. It was good. I uh, thought the dish would be better without the jamon. But I don't think octopus needs the crumb. Sophie and Catherine's entree, I think they send a message they can, can cook what you cook. <laughs> I'm really upset because they hit that out of the park. The pressure is on, obviously, after that dish. But if they fail the next two dishes, then, you know, they stumble at the hurdle or that. But they jump the first one, which is... <laughs> bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what you really think. <laughs> that was delicious, it was. Sophie and Catherine really served up a posh entree. But I want to know what the judges think. Sophie and Catherine. I was really looking forward to this tonight because you ladies offered great flavours, yummy foods, done simply. And 
I think that's what you've done. <laughs> that's so cruel. <laughs> That is just wow. I can overlook the fact that ain't it a green romesco, that's more like a chimichurri. But the octopus could be pushed off the plate and ignored, and it's still a delicious yeah. plate of food. Octopus cooked perfectly. And the crumbs, the, the slack crunch, uh, the smokiness, the saltiness of it, the whole thing on one fork together, <laughs> yum. Just bloody yum. I think that's a, an amazing start to your night. That's spectacular cooking. It, it shows skill, it shows poise, and it shows balance. And they're hard to do in this environment with this amount of pressure, especially when you know you've got some really good cooks around this table who are going to be looking at every move. I just <laughs> felt everything drop off my shoulders. <laughs> I could have floated. Huh? Thank you, ladies. That sets the bar really high. I'm really feeling the pressure for the main course. Nice work, partner. Oh, nice work, <laughs> doll. Time to get crack. Yep. OK, spatchcock is in the oven. For the main course, we're making roast spatchcock with nduya, fresh corn polenta and grilled radicchio. This is for the fresh corn polenta. Like, normally I make this with quick cook polenta, but I feel a little bit non-ish. <laughs> with fresh polenta, I want to see some of the kernels there. I hope it's not overworked, but I, what I don't want to see is lots of the skin of the cob can get stuck between your teeth. I'll do the sauce for the spatchcock. I will put the vinaigrette in before we reduce it anymore because that will add to the body, I think, because it's got that bit of syrupiness, you know? Yeah. And I don't want it to be too sweet, though. We just want the sauce for the spatchcock to be really, really high calibre. I'm nervous about Manu. Manu loves his sauce. Okay, I'm going to taste this as if I was Manu tasting this and try to think what he's thinking. It's too sweet. <gasps> OK, oh. freak out. Oh, my God. It's too sweet. I've been maybe a bit heavy-handed. With the vinaigrette. No, God. Would you create now? I think the pressure is really getting to me. I want to reduce it more, but I'm scared if I reduce it more, it's going to get it's even sweeter. more sweet. I can't, I'm an idiot. It's, it's mm. all right. It's all right. Bonsoir. Uh, hello. I'm coming to the, I'm coming to the washing up. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> I love that. I've always dreamed of what, having one oh of those. Oh, my God. What's, What's it called? called? In French. Je sais pas. Oh, really? Well, it's something like a cuckoo du sol or something like that. <laughs> I don't know if it's cuckoo here, but not me. <laughs> I don't even... Uh, were you happy with your entree critics? Oh, so yes. bad. Yeah. I think, having got that fantastic critic, we both got... <laughs> Yeah, true. <laughs> OK, so, so tell me about it. So spatchcock? Yes. You get have half a spatchcock. We're probably going to cut it into a Maryland and a breast. Yep. I, I, do we tell No, me? no. Shh. No. Well, I'm slightly worried. No. I, the, <laughs> the whole point of it is the vinaigrette. What's the concern here? The, the, the sauce is a little bit sweet. sweet. Have you got a spoon? Can I try the yeah, sauce? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anyways, uh, so you're happy with everything else? You can't taste it, not No, you know, yeah, I think you can. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, yes. I was trying to read his face and I thought I could read his mind saying, too sweet, too sweet. <laughs> I'll leave you to it. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a bit unsettling, wasn't it, Sophie? It certainly made me doubt myself if I hadn't already doubted myself. Um, oh, stop, stop, stop. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> leave it alone! <laughs> Back to your restaurant, we were discussing it before and you said you've cooked and you've been to his restaurant. Well, I've been to many of his restaurants because he's many, had many, many over the years. And this man's a master of classic French food. Mm. Stop Fine. it, you yeah. make me blush. Oh, <laughs> wow. Manu's one of my favourite cooks in Australia. Um, kidding, yeah. <laughs> you freak. Uh -huh. <laughs> Poor Manu. No, run, then... Manu, run. <laughs> who's, who's the most famous person you've ever cooked for? Well, oh, Matt. Besides uh, Matt? Besides Matt, who is it? Mick Jagger. <gasps> no. no. That's pretty good. Mick Jagger? Okay. I mean... I was like, what, what the, the hell? Mick Jagger, that's pretty special. Mick Jagger, I'm thinking, oh, he served him French snails and frog legs and he licked his own little frog legs. 
So it was about 20 years ago. He just turned up for a just simple uh, fruit salad. Well, I didn't really cook for him. He <laughs> gave a fruit salad. He served them fruit salad. <laughs> How's that cooking for Mick Jagger? What was your reaction? What? Well, I, I, I think it was a bit weird. It's winter by the beach, so there was no one there, and it was just him and his wife. Oh, OK. You just served him <laughs> fruit salad. <laughs> oh, <he's laughs> That's looking. No, oh, it's looking nice. They look perfect. Oh, I so actually think they're, they're probably great. done. Once we've got the spatchcock out and let it to rest, we know at that point we really have to start thinking about plating up and getting it out there. Yeah, whatever the sauce is like. Yes. Yep. Yeah, Beautiful. happy with those. The other, ones, there's, there's other ones, other ones. Just the radicchio. I reckon it's looking good. Do you want me to start uh, the... cutting the um, spatchcock in half? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that feels a little bit real. So when we've made this dish before, I've, I often do a whole half spatchcock, which you sort of rightfully point out looks a bit like roadkill, so yeah, we decide. Yeah, it's, it's not elegant. Okay. So you cut them down the middle with the shears. So to put all the leggies on one side. If we cut it as a breast in a Maryland, we can prop give them up against height. each other, give it a bit of height, yeah. a bit yeah. more restaurant to use. God, it does make them really beautiful. Manu sounded excited about the nduya, but there's a lot of nduya in this, you know? It's very spicy. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's very up in your face. We're nervous that there's a few chili averse people and yeah. it won't be what they're expecting. Well, and the judges would think if you've overdone the chili. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, it probably could be done with more finesse, but would that be us? <laughs> I don't know. We're almost done here and then we can actually start plating up. Oh, these are so juicy, I can't tell you, I think they're perfectly cooked. Now, if there was one group of people at this table who got overexcited at the mention of Vinduya, it was you two over here, Leanne and Malayla. Oh, I love it. It's calabresi. Mm -hmm. it's it's proper right. calabresi, fatty. If for those people who haven't tried it, yeah, spicy. give us a... You can even spread it on okay, your bread. So spread on we cook bread. with it. We, we use it as in anything. I'm just thinking, where are they going to put the nduya? That's what I was thinking yeah. too. I mean, it's are they going to put strong. it on top? Yeah, like just a paste spread on a, on a bread. bread. It's very Pungent, strong. It's strong. It's um, spicy. spicy. It's hot. A bit like us. Yeah. That word in my language means something else. Yeah. So, so nduja is how we say it. It means white man. Oh, oh really? Wow. Yeah, this will be interesting because if, if it's got anything to go by the entree, I think the, the spatchcock is going to come out with a top hat. So that's a really good <laughs> image. I think this dish definitely resembles who Sophie and Catherine are. They've fancied it up. Instead of using like a roast chicken, they've gone the spatchcock. Instead of using mashed potato, they've gone the they've gone the sweet corn polenta. Roast spatchcock, I, I'm expecting this little bird on my plate. I've never eaten it before. I think the spatchcock with the nduya will be like a roast. That'll be like the, the skin, I guess, will be brushed with the it. Base. I wouldn't order this if I went out, but going after their entree, I'm expecting them to come in with this really beautiful dish. They set a really good bar, but they set a bar for themselves. Now they've got to bring it to that level or higher for main and dessert. Did they shoot themselves in the foot? We'll see. Okay. I think the sauce is still sweet. Once we pair yeah, it with everything, else. I think it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, do you need help? So I did the polenta, blop, blop, blop. Because I think you need to see it underneath the spatchcock. So I think the ridicule is great. It's managed to hold together. But it's what we meant it to yes. be. If, if we got it wrong, we'll... We'll okay. go down in flames. That's OK. OK. Now, our chickens. Leg down and then breast on top. I think the breast is prettier than the okay. leg. But well, I think it should be the other way around, though. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, they don't sit as obediently as one might wish. Okay. I propped the chickens, prop, yep. prop, 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 and then I did the sauce. Yes. Um, so a little yes. bit of sauce on top. Yes. And then we are. we're ready to go. Teamwork. <laughs> Manu is going to love it. It does look pretty. Just, I'm going to be a delicate hand with the gremolata, though. Nice. Nah, nice. OK, which, which ones are the prettiest for the judges? It looks better than it's ever looked, or any times I've cooked it at home for my kids. Still a bit nervous about the sauce being sweet. But with everything else on the plate, yeah. I think it's a good And balance. the spicy and duya, 
I think is going to be delicious. So, have we forgotten anything? Spatchcock? <laughs> Wait, we've got the gremolata, yes. Gremolata, yep. radicchio. Is that all that goes on this dish? Yes. I feel very confident because actually, I hadn't been sure how they were going to receive the first course and they've received it so well. So this, they should be over the moon. That one and this one? Yep. Okay. Let's go. Oh my goodness. Here goes. I'm thrilled with this main. I'm nervous about the sweet sauce, but I'm hoping that the other elements balance it out. Main course is served. Sophie and Catherine, I think, were skipping out with their main course. They knew this was going to be a good meal. It looked beautiful. I felt it could have been a bit more charred. Couldn't wait to taste it to see if it matched the first dish. Thank you guys, enjoy. And I was looking for the ndouya and I couldn't find it. Yeah, and we're I thinking, said, where's the ndouya? ndouya. You said, did they ndouya? forget it off the plate? And I'm saying, oh, hopefully they did. It's never a nice feeling standing in front of the judges waiting to be judged. It's tense, it's nerve-wracking. I'm it's, very um... relieved at this stage though, <laughs> aren't you? That we've got something up and that it looks so good. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Enjoy. Bon appétit. I found the ndouya. Yes. We're sitting there, hidden under, under the skin. Under the skin. <laughs> Is that it there? Mum would go and get a spatchcock. She'd cook it in that ndouya and you'd see it and it'd turn red. Hiding. Hiding's fine dining. I think you've got to pick it up. Yeah, you have to pick it up. I have a butter knife, so I can't really cut it. I think they did everything perfect. There was just too much of it all. The ndouya was just in pockets and it blew my head off when I had those pockets. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Matt's over the other side and he's sort of coughing and spluttering a little and... The ones that can't eat chilli. Ndouya's no, getting no. you now. It's Dave quite, it's would, have, it would have been nothing for him. He's real sharp. The spatchcock was cooked to my liking and radicchio, I tried it by itself and I didn't like it. But then when I tried it with all the elements, it was banging. What I was afraid could happen did happen. Chapter 2, definitely a very good book. Loved it. And yet again, a dish that I will probably uh, expect to see in a five-star restaurant. I thought it was very sweet. I was expecting the polenta to be sweet, but there was a sweetness to the sauce as well. Mm. There wasn't anything wrong with the main. There was a couple of things they could have done differently. I would have liked the sauce to be a little bit more savoury, salty, mm. perhaps. Mm. I liked it. Um, I don't like radicchio, though. It's just like, bleh. But that's OK. You don't have to like everything. Yeah, true. <laughs> Spatchcock, I've never had it before, but I like it. And the nduya, I like, because it makes you want to keep eating it. So I liked it. I like the balance between I like it, I didn't love it. <laughs> but I didn't like it, but I liked it a bit. But... No, I like it. So after all those negatives, you I liked like it. it. OK, great. I like Brilliant. It. Obviously, we'd love to get the same response oh, for our main as our entree, so we wait and hope. Just by reading the main course, it's a mouthful. There's a lot of elements to a dish. This represents to me the, the typical cuisine of, and, and don't stab me in the back, but uh, the <laughs> Australian cuisine, when there's a bit of everything from different parts of the world in one dish, and it gets a little confusing. The spatchcock 
did go with all that dish, but then uh, for me, as much as I love Anduya, I think it, it was the thing that shouldn't have been on there. Or maybe do an oil with it and brush it on the skin. So when you eat, you don't want to have the explosion of Anduya in one, in one bite and then not on the other. You want, you want it to be a co-star, you don't want to be a cameo. You want it to be there the whole time. Yeah. You want... It's like MKR, I'm always here, but he's not. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I'm sweeter because of it. <laughs> Do we want more of him? Do it. Do it. Yeah. Yes. For me, what makes this dish so delicious is that fresh corn polenta, the sweetness in the sauce, and then that bitterness of the radicchio in the middle. They're big, punchy flavors bumping up against each other. I love that combination. I thought the sauce was a little sweet, but then the, the contrast with the radicure, it just works so well. So it was a great dish, but nothing like your entrewear. That was like outstanding. I'm pretty sure we're not getting a 10. <laughs> we're not getting a 10. I do feel a bit deflated in that way that you do when you've had a real high and then someone punctures your balloon. So now we've got one course left. You must deliver. Can you do it? I think we can. <laughs> yep. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I think after the main, I think there's a slight chance that we could stay up at the top. All right, well, it was a bit of a come down it after the a, first goal. <laughs> it was a little bit, I have to say, I got a little humpy because I felt I'd been called an Australian bogan. I don't think he was calling me as a bogan. <laughs> And it makes a change from being called posh. <laughs> what he was saying was fusion can sometimes lead to confusion. After our slightly unsettling main course judgment, I really, really, really want to nail it home. Because that would be the end of this. Let's do it. Let's boil down Pedro Chimenez syrup. Yep. For dessert, we're making a fig leaf semifredo with grilled figs and a Pedro Jimenez syrup. Pedro Jimenez, it's a sherry, but it's more like a musket. It's very, very sweet. It's a big, ballsy flavour when you're putting that up against fig leaf semifreda, which is very subtle. We're not going to drink the rest, are we? <laughs> <laughs> if it's out of balance, it, it could be a little bit disappointing. The fact that we're mixing an Italian semifreda with a Spanish sherry syrup I hope we're not messing with their minds. It could go horribly wrong for us. Have you actually checked, Catherine, whether the um, semifredo has set properly? One of the absolutely crucial parts about semifredo is that it's not icy when it's served. And not also too melty. No, it's too melty, so it's very hard to get right. I think we should get all these ready, slice that, put it out, if wait we're... patiently for 10 minutes, and then, then serve it up and go. I'm fairly confident that it's going to be absolutely set through, but you never know because it can feel hard and cold on the mm. outside and sometimes there's a sort of, you know, unset, miserable warmness inside. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. <sighs> can I just taste the flavour just? So I had a little nibble of the first slice that we cut off and I thought it was, it's yummy. But I couldn't actually detect much fig leaf. We have had ones that have been a little bit more fig leafy. Yeah. If the fig leaf semifredo doesn't taste like fig leaf, that's a bit of a problem. Bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more, really? bit more, tiny bit really? more. Stop. Yep. So Sophie started cutting the semifredo and I was You're getting like, a bit stressed. She was cutting them too fine. I was like, no, 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 no. Bit fatter. <laughs> bit fatter. We do. A bit more, otherwise it'll be too thin, they won't get enough. The so... thing is, it probably is perfectionism. Every millimetre is going to affect how quickly Absolutely. it defrosts Absolutely. or whether it's frosty in the centre. Absolutely. So it actually all really counts. No, I'm very confident with this dessert. It's very elegant and sophisticated. And we're not trying to do too many And it's not things. like a complicated Australian bogan dish. <laughs> <laughs> so Catherine's cooking the figs. She's pressing them into sugar, grilling it in the pan to get a beautiful brulee side. We don't want to cook them too long. We don't want them to start getting weepy or like stewed figs, <laughs> which are not what we're after. <laughs> um, okay, oh, it looks like it's nice and bubbly. Can I taste some? <laughs> Sarah, oh my God, that's... I mean, that's just such an amazing thing, isn't it? Yeah. Rosie, Hayley, dessert. 
I actually don't know what um, Pedro Zimmerman is, or however <laughs> you say it. I'm sure we'll find out what that is. Who is Pedro? Who is Pedro? He's a cousin of mine, actually. <laughs> Firstly, say it. How do we say it? Uh, Pedro Jimenez. Uh, oh, I like he's the way you say that. a liqueur. Uh, I've never had it before. I'm really, really, um, yeah. really, really intrigued on this one, on these desserts. And um, the fig leaf. Um, I love figs. I love good figs. I used to stew them. So I'd pick them off the tree and then stew figs into the jam. So I'm hoping that the um, semifreddo is just full of fig. Fingers crossed. We're going to be figged. <laughs> figged out. <laughs> For fig's sake! <laughs> Looking forward to it. I want to try it. I like ice cream. Half cold. Semifreddo. <laughs> Semifreddo is an Italian dish, yes. It is. You can have um, it in different. You can have it in cake form. And a lot of different yeah. forms. I love the grilled fi figs. I hope it's just not sweet on sweet on sweet. The sherry at the bottom. Looking forward to trying it, but I just don't get the fig leaf. I'm yeah. dying to see what that is. I'm looking forward to trying this. I think it's going to be really good. Now they've got to bring it and yeah, do it well. Yeah, exactly. So. Where are you, how are you doing it? Now, how do we make them sit on their bottom? We decide last minute to put the syrup in a pan and a go out. Dear and little copper pot. <laughs> dear little copper pot. And we'll put the syrup on the dessert after we put the plate down on the table. Yes, we're going to syrup at the table. It's going to start melting. We were worried the semifreddo was going to melt. No, no, no. So one person left to carry the syrup, one person two plates, and that's what we're going to do. So Can this one that? and this one. Yes. You take the pot and you do the sourcing and I'll take the plates through. Let's go. All right. Here goes. We walk into the dining room. It's actually quite warm in the dining room and we've got cold semifreddo in our hands and now we've got this uh, complication of having to spoon syrup out. I was very, very worried. Dessert is served. They look pretty pleased with themselves. They know they did a good job. Yeah, and they're I all proud tell. and confident. They were proud. looks so delicious, thank you. The food was too highbrow for us. I, I maybe just we're just too simple. Is that the fig leaf in there? Yeah. I think Catherine would be better doing this job than me. I'm so nervous. My hand is shaking <laughs> so badly. I'm like, la, 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 la. Thank you so much. Thank you. Every single thing that came out was just iconic. But yeah. will it complement each other? Will it overpower us? We'll see. Once we've put the plates down, all we can do at this point is cross our fingers and hope we've done enough. I'm seeing the judges eating their dessert with one of Catherine's great-grandmother's beautiful silver antique spoons and trying to get it into the fig. I thought, uh-oh, why didn't we serve it with a knife and fork? Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank Enjoy, you. everyone. Bon appétit. My fig tree. She's all over these things. <laughs> oh, sorry. Too sweet. Mm. I found it so sweet. I'm not saying it was wrong, but my palate didn't like it. Reach for me. It's nice. That is. Sophie and Catherine's dessert was amazing. I, don't, I just don't even have much to say because it's just flavours that all went together, the whole menu went together. It was a trip around the globe and we were on that. Yeah. Oh, coconut. Yeah. Yeah. Coconut has coconut. Yeah. What the hell is this coconut taste coming from? I thought that's not an ingredient. Nobody mm. mentioned it was coconut. Mm. Where was the fig leaf? Was there a bit of coconut in there? It was the flavour of the fig leaf. 
The coconut? Yeah. Oh, wow. I learned something new from Matt and Manu, that the fig leaf, once you cook it up, gives you a coconut scent. An almost bullseye for me. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Almost. They had some knowledge. Yes, yeah. Something there with those girls. I will find out. <laughs> the mafia girls always find out. <laughs> Semifreddo, it tasted to me like whipped cream. I know it's supposed to be light and fluffy, but the sherry sauce was very sweet. I mean, the flavours were lovely, but to me, the more I kept eating, it was too sickly for me. I liked it. Yeah, it looks like it. Mm. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of Pedro Jimenez, but I think it worked with this, and it wasn't too sweet. Did Sophie and Catherine go all the way to Spain to get Pedro Jimenez? Because I've literally never seen that at Liquorland. <laughs> <laughs> Walking back into the dining room for a dessert critique, there was nothing more that we could have done. It is a simple dessert. I'm a little worried. Semifredo in French is frozen parfait, and parfait means perfect. And it was absolutely perfect. <laughs> I think this is a sort of dessert that really divides the table, yeah? It's either it's way too sweet and it's like, it's oh, too much, or else you love it. For me, I'm in the ladder camp. It's just like a cloud, like a frozen cloud. And what I loved most about it is it wasn't oversweet, like an ice cream. The semifreddo, which you've absolutely managed to capture that telltale coconut flavour of fig leaves. Adding pistachio, delicious. But the surprise is a little splash of that Pedro Jimenez reduction just, I think, lights up the dish. It tastes like Christmas to me. I think the three elements on one plate really work together. I've got nothing negative to say about this dessert. Very happy tonight, thank you very much. Oh my goodness. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Job done. Sophie and Catherine definitely we had, had Manu and Matt wrapped, wrapped around, around their, their fingers, fingers and their tongues everywhere. And, yep, yeah, you know him. Anyway, the hard work's done. <laughs> we can't do anything more. But wait for our scores. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> While Sophie and Catherine wait anxiously in the kitchen, their fellow competitors must judge their instant restaurant and give it a score out of 10. Today for entree, entree. we had the twice cooked octopus. Octopus was perfect. That was my favourite of the night. That was yeah. my favourite of the night too. The entree is absolutely spot on. The romesco sauce. Oh. And the whole of the dish really. Awesome. Main spatchcock, great. A little confusing with too many things, but... Mm. Bit sweet. Everything else is perfect. So what do you think about the spatchcock? It was nice, it just wasn't well. For the dessert, the fig leaf semifreddo. Yeah, I actually love the semifreddo. It was so nice, I could taste that fig leaf coconut. Yeah, you picked that up before anything. Straight away. The sauce was that a was nice. Sweet. Yeah, a little bit sweet, but overall, overall... they did a great job. I think the girls cooked really well. The restaurant was beautiful, the food was outstanding, but the dessert wasn't me. I'm thinking about, you know, an eight. Yeah, I'm happy with that, yeah. definitely. The main's not been as good as the entree, and the dessert for me is not perfect, but mm. overall, they've done a bloody awesome job. Yeah. Seven it is. Yeah. Let's go again. Us maintaining our position at the top after Sophie and Catherine uh, cooking will be very unlikely. Just call them an eight, an eight. Yeah. I think an eight's good, Melina. Yeah? Yeah, we'll, we'll give them an eight. eight. Yep. OK, great. Eight for us. I'm happy to give them an eight. Yes? Yeah, I think so. I think they did it. I they think deserve they, an eight. They, they did a good amazing. job. Yeah. I'm impressed, Yeah. but I'm angry because yeah. they've raised that bar. Just yum overall. Nine out of ten. Mm. Yeah, I'm happy with a nine. Nine out of ten. Everything was amazing. The main was a point off, and that's just being really particular. They were perfect in every course. There's nothing we can do, let's go. All right, come on. We want top of the leaderboard. We want to win this competition. <laughs> and I felt we'd given it everything we possibly could. This is our night. This is what it's all been leading up to. But it's all going to come down to the judges.
Sophie and Catherine, thank you so much for the warmth, the hospitality. You put us by the hearth, you put your hearts on the table. We really appreciate that. Thank you. But now it's time for the scores. Waiting for the results. I mean, it was overwhelming, wasn't it? As well as nervous, I felt very proud of what we put up. The guest teams here have given you a combined score of 40 out of 50. I'm utterly thrilled that everyone scored us on average 8 out of 10. It's giving me hope that the judges might feel the same. And now it's our turn. We're going to score each dish out of 10. Manu? Sophie and Catherine, for entree, you gave us two as cooked octopus with green romesco sauce and ham on crumbs. It was a perfect entree for me. Perfectly cooked octopus, perfect sauce, perfect crumb. Sophie and Catherine, I've only got two words to say about your entree. Effing delicious. <laughs> and that's why I'm giving you the perfect score. Ten. The score I'm giving you for your entree is a ten. <laughs> <laughs> two tens for the entree. What a way to start. Oh, I know. My goodness. <laughs> I was waiting for that to happen. Two perfect scores of ten for their entree. I think they do deserve it. For main course, you gave us roast spatchcock with fresh corn polenta, nduya, and grilled relicchio. I love that the heart of this dish was a great interplay between bitter, sweet, a little bit of sour, and just on-point cooking all along the way. As much as I love your entree, your main course wasn't as perfect for my liking. Polenta was absolutely delicious. The sauce, sweet, but great accompaniment to the bitter radicule. The spatchcock and induya probably wasn't married as well as I was hoping for. For me, you didn't need to add some of those extra flourishes. It's a bit like if we put Manu in a top hat and a monocle, it wouldn't make him look any better. He's <laughs> elegant as he is. <laughs> it's just like you like the top hat and monocle. I really enjoyed that main course, and that's why I gave you an eight. The scum giving you for your main course is a seven. I have to confess to feeling a bit, <laughs> a bit deflated. He was a little harsh, I thought. I thought he was a little harsh. I was worried they were going to get tens for their mains as well. That's what I thought too, and I, I thought, <laughs> thank God they didn't. Yeah. Sophie and Catherine, for dessert, you gave us fig leaf semifredo, roast fig, and Pedro Jimenez. Manu perfectly summed it up. A frozen cloud. Frozen cloud, a little sweetness of your Pedro Jimenez and fresh fig. It just, the three elements uh, were perfect together. What you did with the fig was take it from being an okay fig into being a better fig by roasting it. The scum giving you for your dessert is a 10. <laughs> I'm giving you a 10. Well done. <laughs> We've and done so well. Yeah, so no. well. It's a dream come true. Sophie and Catherine, that gives you a grand total score of 95. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> After the second instant restaurant, Sophie and Catherine are on top of the leaderboard with a score of 95. But there are still four more instant restaurants to go. So far, so far, not saying what might still happen, we but did it. we're top of the leaderboard. <laughs> Sophie, Catherine, thank you for a wonderful night. We'll see you all a breeze. Please. <laughs> we're cooking next. And 95, that is extremely high. We're really nervous. There's a lot of pressure to try and get right up there. They've done well. We could have some real competition here. See you next time. We know we can do it. Bye. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs>